Hello everyone, my name is Yolanda Carter. I am a real estate agent with J. Parr Merlin Living. Today I will be interviewing a loan officer and his name is Michael Marinucci. Please introduce yourself, Michael. Thanks for having me. Yes, I'm Mike Marinucci. I'm with Main Street Home Loans and uh, I'm happy to be here. Awesome. So today I have a few questions for Michael that may be very helpful for you all. And my first question is, what type, what type of home loans do you offer? Sure. So, I mean, you're, we're your full, you know, um, correspondent lender. So we offer your full gambit of what we call agency loans. So we have all of your conventional loans, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, FHA, VA, USDA. Um, I would say that's probably going to be about 90% of the clients you run into. Um, but then we also have some outside the box solutions as well, too, uh, for maybe self-employed borrowers that might not qualify for certain agency loans. So, you know, we do have some other interesting um, products out there as well, too. Awesome, thank you. Now, is your underwriting in-house? Sure, yeah, so um, Main Street Home Loans, the great thing about us is we control the process from start to finish. So we underwrite, we process, um, we fund all in-house. So clients only deal with us from start to finish. It's not like we're a broker where we send it out to somebody else to underwrite, so it allows us to be a lot quicker and a lot smoother and uh, make it much more enjoyable for the, uh, the home buyers for sure. Awesome. Now, since you're a local lender, mm -hmm. is it pretty easy to get a hold of you? You know, sometimes you may have lenders who are out of state and they typically only work at 9 to 5, mm -hmm. Monday through Friday. Would it be, would someone be able to reach you outside of those 9 yeah. to 5 hours? Yeah, I mean, that's one of the things that we kind of um, pride ourselves on, right, is that, you know, we know a lot of the business is done on the weekend, so, or after hours, so people get off of work. So, you know, uh, we're always available and we're ready to help. Uh, whenever you need it, whenever the clients need it. So yeah, we're, we're kind of outside of the traditional banking hours. Awesome, that's good to know because sometimes things happen mm -hmm. after five o'clock. Yep. <laughs> so typically, how long does it take for a loan to close? So, you know, generally about 30 days, uh, plus or minus, depending on the loan program. Some might take a little bit longer, some might be a little bit quicker, but the general norm is about 30 days. And, um, you know, if things go a little bit quicker than that, you know, maybe we have a home buyer that's really on top of things or the underwriting process goes a little quicker, you know, hey, we could always move that timeline up and close faster than that. But generally speaking, about 30 days or so for closing. Awesome, that's great to know. Mm -hmm. So buyers, get your paperwork in quick and fast mm -hmm. so you can get into your house. And my other question is documents. You know, okay. when someone is trying to apply for a home loan, what type of documents do they typically need? Sure. So, it, you know, it's going to vary based on, you know, the, the borrower, how they get paid, the different, you know, loan types that we might be doing. So, you know, all those different things uh, require, you know, a little bit of different documentation. But generally speaking, the things that we look at are going to be your pay stubs, mm -hmm. your W-2s, your bank statements, uh, tax returns. And that's really just kind of about it as far as the, the typical documents and depending on, like I mentioned, the type of loan and the type of income they receive, we might need to get, you know, a few additional things from them. But that's generally the um, documents that we need. And we only look back over a two year period as well, too. So on a mortgage application, um, you know, we don't have to show your W-2s or tax returns for the last five or 10 years or anything like okay. that. You know, just the last two years is what we look at for income and employment. Gotcha. Now, what are the documents needed for someone who may be self-employed? So self-employed, um, you know, you're probably not going to have pay stubs, we wouldn't anything like that. You're probably not going to have W-2s because, you know, you, you're a 1099 or you run your own business. So really, we just look at the tax returns for the last two years, uh, profit and loss statements as well, too, and usually bank statements as well. And then, you know, those can vary slightly depending on the program. Oh, awesome. So that's great information to have. Now, this is one question I think everybody wants to answer okay. to. Do you participate in any down payment assistance programs? And if so, you know, just give us an overview of the ones that you Sure. Do. Yeah, so I mean, we have quite a bit of them, um, and that's a really big uh, talking point, a really hot, big hot button for first-time home buyers, uh, because you know we know that generally the biggest hurdle for home ownership on first-time home buyers is that cash to close, right? That down payment plus the closing cost. So uh, these programs do, you know, serve to break down that barrier to help more first-time home buyers get in. And uh, yeah, we have a lot of different ones. We have some 
that are specific to just uh, certain cities where you're purchasing or certain counties and then there's some that are um, you can do throughout the entire state of Maryland so there's a bunch of different ones so it's really hard to say exactly you know this one or that one so that's where I would say if you have a home buyer that's uh, interested in something like that hey send them our way and we'll take a look at all the options they can qualify for and let them know what down payment assistance programs are available in the areas they're looking in to help make it a little bit easier to get into that home. So another good question that a lot of buyers have is down payment and closing costs. Mm -hmm. cost. Can you elaborate on the sure. two different types of? Definitely, so there's a lot of different terms coming out there, uh, especially uh, when you're buying your first home, it might be a little um, daunting, right? Not exactly sure what everything means. But um, yes, the, the amount of money that you need the closing table is what we call your cash to close. So that is your down payment plus your closing costs. So there are some loan types that don't require a down payment. So you can do 100% financing, so you're really just bringing the closing cost to the table. Um, other ones do require a small down payment if you're a first time home buyer, anywhere from three to three and a half percent. So that's based off of the sales price of the home. And then closing costs are also going to be factored in as well. That's about another three to four percent on top of that. So. And that can vary from where you're purchasing because some closing costs are fixed and some are like a certain percentage. So um, again, that can vary. But generally speaking, three to 4% is about average for closing costs. So a great way to kind of quantify that for a first time home buyer is say, hey, you're gonna need about seven to 8% of the sales price of the home for your cash to close. Um, part of that being the down payment if they need to make one and the other part being the closing costs. Now, the good thing about closing costs though, um, it can be paid by anybody, mm -hmm. right? So the closing costs, it could be paid by the seller, the buyer, or a combination of the two. So in today's market, it's not always a guarantee that we can get the this seller to pay it, but <laughs> it can't hurt to ask, right? And that That's way right. that home, home buyer could get in for a little bit less as well. Awesome, thank you. Well, you provided some great information for everyone today. Please let us know how we can contact you. Sure, yeah, so um, you know, we'll put my contact information right down here below. Your uh, cell phone is gonna be on there, email, you can get a hold of me that way, call, text, whatever works for you works for me. Awesome, and my contact information will be down below as well, so if you need us, give us a call.